and welcome everybody. Welcome to a new episode of the Every Day is a New Day show. My name is Kim O'Neill and I get so excited for these shows. So I'm excited for today's guest and what we're going to be talking about. But before we move forward with that, let's take a moment to shake off yesterday. Shake off the five minutes before you came here and joined us in today's show. Shake off the last 10 years if it's been replaying in your head. Shake off whatever is weighing you down, shifting your focus away from you, your present moment, you being able to be in your greatest power right here, right now, because it's a gift that you give yourself that you also then give the world. <sighs> Take a deep breath into that. So glad to have you here. Let's start with a quote. Let's start with a fun quote. I say fun because you'll see why. Today's quote is from also from Carl Jung. We used one from him recently. This one is, the privilege of a lifetime is to become who you truly are. Who you truly are. The authentic version of you. I say that's fun because to me, that is just rich with so much freedom, freedom and being able to be who you are. We're all able to be who we are. We have permission to be who we are, but sometimes we've got to give ourselves permission. Oh my gosh. I could, so many, so many tangents I could go on in just that little bit that I just shared right there. Right. Oh, mm, you get to be who you are. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share with you today's topic. Today, we are talking about how the authentic you makes you a better film and TV actor. And while this show is going to be fantastic, of course, for actors, aspiring actors, this is also going to be relevant for every single human who's simply looking to be more of who they are in the world, meaning you. So let me share with you about today's guest. I'm going to read a little bit about her and then we'll bring her up on screen. Today we are talking with Tanya Lynette Smith. Tanya Lynette Smith is an acting coach who has been working in film, television, and on stage for the past 24 years. In 2014, she began to coach actors privately and on set. And in 2017, she decided to teach small intimate classes with the belief that actors truly flourish when observing and working alongside one another. She has appeared on such shows as Party of Five, Grey's Anatomy, The Thundermans, Beverly Hills 90210, City of Angels, and Four Corners, just to name a few. And of course, those are just her TV credits. She also has film credits. And while coaching full-time, Tanya continues to study and take various classes herself, which I think is awesome. And she believes that one must never stop learning. And of course, today we're talking about how the authentic you makes you a better film actor. And so welcome, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here today. I'm really excited to be to, to be combining the subject of being your authentic self and how that supports actors, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people can be like, what do you mean? That doesn't make sense. That sounds contradictory. And uh, I know that it's not. And and before you get into asking you any questions, what what just initial thoughts do you have about how authenticity and being an actor combine? I mean, it's, it's everything. And you're right. You're right. It's so funny. You're like, yeah, that seems like that would be opposites or something because we think of acting as it's not you and it's somebody else, right? It's, you know, somebody else. And, you know, in essence, I mean, that is true. You are playing a character that is not you. But what I say to my actors is you only know the sky is blue because someone told you the sky is blue. And so the way that you relate to a character is how you understand to relate to a character based on what you've been taught. And so it is about you and it is about bringing yourself to it and your differences to it. And you have to be authentic and you have to know yourself in order to even do that. So, okay. Yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. The, the first question is coming to mind. It's, it's, I'm just wondering, how do you define what an actor or actress is? An actor or an actress, or let's just say actor, is a storyteller. That's basically all we are. We're storytellers. We take information and we tell the story in such a way that people perk up and listen or they lose themselves or they enter another world. We just tell stories that have been given to us. It's, it's so simple. You know, it's just like people think it's like, oh, it's this thing, this, this actor. But if you really break it down and go, what's happening right now? I'm being told a story, you know? Yeah. Well, so, so when we talk about, I love that. Thank you. Because I think that does help simplify um, what, what it takes to be an actor is 
being that person who's going to tell the story. And so, and then how does a person tell a story that they maybe haven't lived themselves? Oh, and yeah. here we are saying, well, you have to be more of yourself, but yourself hasn't experienced that. <laughs> right. So, so let's, let's, let's dive a little bit more deeply into that. How does knowing oneself support a person in telling a story they've never lived? Well, you know, it, that's such a great question. I like, I'm trying to, I want to answer it and be like, nice the way I answer it. Right. So <laughs> okay. go with it. I know. Okay. I'm just going to go for it. Right. He'll laugh about this. So um, let's just say, this is good. okay. You know what? I'm going to be honest. Okay. Let's just say um, I have a character that I'm going to take on. Who's a murderer. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I've never murdered anyone. Okay. I've never murdered anyone, but I have to think, I know you have, right. I have to think to myself, well, how am I going to play a murderer if I've never murdered anyone? So I have to dip into my own life and say, it's not that, you know, um, I really believe in using your imagination as an actor versus like these life experiences and bringing them forward. That's just like my style of it. But, um, I do believe in living in the essence of and the feeling of. So if I have to play a murderer, but I've never murdered anyone, I have to think, when have I been so angry and uh, in my life? And I think I had an ex-husband who, who made me so mad once. And I was just like, Rrr! you know, I was so angry. And I was like, Whoo, oh my gosh, that's what that feels like. But I, I'm not going to do anything, but that's what it felt like to have this rage inside of me so I can say, you know what? I know what it's like. Um, luckily, I didn't take the next step, but I can use that feeling of what that felt like. So therefore, I guess I know what murder is. I, I don't know. Is that crazy? No, that's so awesome. What I absolutely love about that is- I got to call him and say, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he, well, I mean, he, he, he's- that experience with him serves you today in what yeah. you do, right? It all like serves a purpose. It's all connected if we choose to utilize it and learn from those things. So I, I no, I freaking love that. Um, I, I and I, I hear you. I have oh, an ex -husband. Yeah, Oh yeah. I, I have an ex-husband too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Um, so, okay. What, what's, what was really shining though, as you were sharing that is, I mean, you have to be able to be in tune with well, what did that experience feel like? What is that like for me? And just in the grander scheme of life, right? Beyond acting, it's so important to be able to be in tune with our emotions, to be able to understand what am I experiencing? What's going on? How, I'm going to just kind of take it in the, the life direction for a moment, right? How do my thoughts and my feelings all contribute to my actions? That the more we know ourselves, I, then I mean, the better we're able to love ourselves, be more authentic, all of that kind of thing. And so that skill absolutely helps an actor if you can be able to tune into that. And let's say that you, let's say that you've, you know, been married and it wasn't so great, but maybe you haven't really looked at it. You don't really know why. And there could be this whole plethora of experiences you've never tapped into because you're not quite connected to your emotions. Right. That, okay. I just had, that was, that, that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> Uh, so what do you notice as one of the biggest challenges for actors? Um, you know, there's, you're an acting coach. There are all these acting classes people could do workshops left and right. And here we are also saying, well, it's simple. Right. And so, so what do you notice as one of the biggest challenges for actors um, to step into that more authentic space within themselves? I think I'm about to say what every acting coach would say, and it is insecurity. If you let the insecurity, we are all insecure. I mean, I'm insecure. We're I've all insecure, right? We all <laughs> yes. have our things, right? I wake up in the morning sometimes and I'm like, whew, okay, you're good. You're great. You're wonderful. You're beautiful, right? And I have to tell myself like these things because sometimes I do feel depressed and I do feel insecure and I do feel like, why, like, why would this person want to interview me? You know, I mean, I still go through this, this dialogue in my head. And so actors, like one of the first things, you know, I'll say, to, I'll say to them, I'm like, look, it's scary. Of course, it's scary. You have to learn lines. You have to say things that were not written for you. And you have to get up there and you have to have people watching you. And what if you forget a line? What if you forget what's going on? What if they judge you? All of that. And so it's like, I always say to them, it's not about getting, you can't get rid of them. I really don't think you could just get rid of them. 
but how do you like make friends with them? How do you embrace them? How do you say, wow, you know what? I feel really scared right now. And thank you very much. I'm still going to do this. I don't know. That, yeah, that, I think that's a great point and it makes a lot of sense. A lot of people can relate to that. Um, what is coming up for me and, and I, you know, this may, I, you in the audience, let me know if you can relate to this. So I, I also have a performance background. I did theater, uh, singing, voiceover, things like that. And what I think is so interesting, and this is where you, the audience, may be able to identify or relate mm -hmm. is, or, or of course you, Tanya, as well, is I remember when I was younger and doing theater that I had way fewer insecurities with that versus singing. Now, when mm -hmm. I sang, it, <laughs> if I had rehearsed a bunch, if I had, um, you know, I felt really, when I got to the point where I felt really good, then it was like, okay, now I'm more confident and I can get on stage and I can do my thing. Right. But if I wasn't rehearsed yet, if I was still in the like figuring it out stages and working Ugh. through the notes and aligning with it all, um, you know, my stepmom was a, my is, my stepmom is a fantastic singer. And I remember trying to rehearse around her and I couldn't, I just mm -hmm. couldn't do it. it I would just, yeah. you know, I remember being in the, I had a little closet that I would uh, practice <laughs> and rehearse. It, you know, it sounds weird, but uh, that I would rehearse in with a little keyboard. And right. I, I was like singing like a mouse, you know, it was like, <laughs> cause I didn't want, I, I was too insecure. I didn't want her to hear me. And so, um, it, so I don't, you know, I don't know. I guess I, for some reason, wanted to share that because you may be able to identify that you're confident in one area and yet confused. Why am I so insecure or scared in another area? Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on that kind of thing? I think that makes total sense. You know, some things just come easier to some people than they do to others. Like yeah. I remember I'm not a very good singer. I mean, I'm fantastic in the shower, but I'm not a very good singer. And I remember I wanted to go out for the show Rent. And like, I was just like, oh, I'd love to be in Rent. And it came to LA. This is so long ago. And I hired a, a voice coach and I spent so much money and I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. And at this one moment, like the note that I was trying to hit, it just happened. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's what that feels like. I didn't know what it feels like. And I was just like, great, now I have this confidence. And then I went up to audition and the note didn't come out. Oh. But you know, the note didn't come out because I didn't believe in myself. I thought, who, I, it's not going to happen. I kept telling myself, I, that was a fluke. It's not going to happen. And I couldn't do it. I just like couldn't do it. But then there's other areas like, you know, with acting and stuff and taking on a world and a character. If I forget a line, I'm just like, oh, I forgot a line. Let me look over here and get it. It's no big deal. It's so easy. But that, oh my gosh, never doing that. I, even now I'm like, I'm not doing that again. It, I, thank you for sharing that. And so, and so what do you notice about actors who are in that space of learning to believe in themselves more. What have you noticed? Is there like a pivotal turning point when all of a sudden things click and they believe in themselves and have more confidence to yes. show up on stage? Yes. I had an actress. <laughs> she'll, I won't mention her name. Um, she'll be like, Tanya, I know it was me. Um, we were in acting class. We were in class, right? In my, my in-person class. And um, we were working through something. She's very, very good, very talented um, actress. And um, I was giving her notes and I noticed she was defensive. And I mean, I love her. She loves me like the class. I have a very supportive class, right? Um, and I noticed like over the past few classes, she was defensive. I give her a note. She'd be like, I was like, and she'll, well, the reason I was doing that was because, and it was just constant. And then there was this one day I could see what was going on for her. I go, what is happening? Why are you so defensive? I, you're paying me. I could just sit here. You're paying me. And she was just like, I'm scared. And I was like, I get it. And so we made an agreement. I was like, okay, you know what? This is what's going to happen. You're going to get up here. You're going to do your work. I'm going to give you zero notes, good, bad, nothing. And you're going to just get to play and have that space. And when you're ready, you come to me. And just having that space, like it was okay to be genuine by the next class. She's like, give me, I was like, I'm not giving you notes. We're going to take two classes. And then after a couple of classes, she's like, I feel so much better and I feel safe now. And I realize that, you know, I, I'm good and I know what I'm doing. And I just had to take that next step and I was scared and now I'm not. And boom, just shifted for her, just shifted. Everything shifted. 
I love that you gave her that space to just show up on stage without any critique whatsoever. And I also love, I, I just got to bring it back to the acknowledging of feelings because sometimes all it takes is voicing those feelings that don't feel so good, right? Yes. I'm scared. I'm yes. scared. And okay, there, there, we acknowledged it. We let it go. And now we can let the confidence and the awesomeness and the everything yes. flow right on in too. Oh, um, there was another question that came up as you were speaking and maybe it will come back. Um, so we'll just put that out there. You can come back question. That's okay. um, I'm thinking of like, when you said that, I'm thinking of all the experiences I just had today surrounding my students and insecurity and all the conversations I had today. So the minute you said, I was like, oh my God, I'm thinking of that. I'm thinking of that. My eyes are getting teary. I'm like, oh, I just thought of that today. And, you know, so it's a, it's, it's, it's deep insecurity is, ugh, you know. Have you ever had any students who actually are not pursuing some sort of acting career, but simply just want to maybe, uh, you know, for a hobby, they want to do acting or they just find it interesting and they maybe they do it for their own personal growth. Do you have any students that are in that space? Yeah. You know, I have a lawyer. So a lawyer came to me. I do get I get people that are not um, actors that come to me. I have a lawyer and he was just like, you know. I want to make the kind of money that these big lawyers make and you have to win all of your cases and these big cases to do it. And something is happening where, you know, I, I'm winning some of them, but not all of them or not even like 90% of them. And he's oh. like, I feel like something is inauthentic. Something is happening where we're not connecting. And I was like, yes. And so he came to class and that is exactly what I taught him. I taught him eye contact when it's needed not to be like a serial killer you know um Yo, and i taught yeah. him how can you right I'm like how can i know you? i'm so glad you mentioned that i'm thinking of the times i've had a conversation with someone and they're just you're like this right i know oh, no i, I do it too because we're listening right so um i helped him and i said you've got to tap into something real about this person and when you it's like if you compliment someone compliment something real you can not like anything about it, but do you like that button? Compliment something real because your brain follows it and then you're authentic because it's the truth. And so that's what I had to teach him because like you're picking jurors, like, right? you know, this is crazy. That is so good because right there, what you're helping people to, what I see that you're helping people to do is to find the connection between every person we meet, anybody at all, right? So for instance, um, you know, let's go back to the example of a, a murderer. Um, <laughs> I love it. I don't know. I, I'm, not, I, I'm all of a sudden regretting I said that. Um, I'm just going to go with it right now. Um, so let's go with that example. So let's say, you know, maybe we think we have nothing in common with a murderer whatsoever, but there's always something, right? So like you said, you know, it's, well, have I ever been angry enough, to, you know, not angry enough to do, uh, but have I ever been super angry? Um, you know, gosh, maybe that's what that person feels like too. Or have I ever been, you know, what, what other kinds of things can link us in terms of how can we relate to that person? You, I really help you seeing people to be able to make stronger connections with not only the characters or roles they play, but then just other people in their daily life. Yeah, that and that is exactly true. It's like, you know, we can have an example of like not a murderer, but like someone that was in an abusive relationship. So there you go. and then we can sit on the outside and go, I would never be in that. I would have left. I would have left. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe you wouldn't. What's an area in your life where I don't know, maybe you have a, a mom that you feel like low under and you just feel like you can't communicate that. And here you are stuck in this thing. So I'd like to think if I was ever in an abusive relationship that I would walk away but maybe I wouldn't, you know, and right. it's like you could sit there in judgment or you can look at that person and say they have things that are going on. And I can relate to some of those things that could possibly lead me to believe why this person would stay in this situation versus judging them and condemning them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I think on those areas where it may be just ultra challenging for someone to find yeah. something in common with someone else. Um, you just use the word judgment. And that is, I find that that word shows up so often as a barrier between two people. If we're judging something yeah. about someone else, it's often a mirror of how are we judging ourselves? And so how do we get around that? Loving ourselves, having more self-compassion for that part of ourselves that lives in our shadow or that we don't like, right? That, right? Things like that. And so yeah, so, okay. And that, of course, that, that could be so much more. Tanya, I want to share... 
when you, you know, when we scheduled this, you shared with me a goal of yours. Do you mind if I share that with today's audience? Oh gosh, do I remember? Yes, share it. I, I, okay. I, I think it's fantastic. So I want to share with everyone. So, so Tanya shared, my goal is to shift, you know what? And maybe, I wonder, maybe I'm quite reading this wrong too. You tell me. So I'm going to read it how I see it. And then you tell me if I actually changed a word. My goal is to shift the world by creating authentic actors who can shed light on subjects that affect our diminishing humanity. Only through art can we enlighten the world. Is it supposed to be word or world? The world. Okay. 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 Perfect. Okay. I, you I got love it. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. The, yeah. Perfect. I wasn't sure if there was a typo there. So I'm going to say that again. My goal is to shift the world by creating authentic actors who can shed light on subjects that affect our diminishing humanity. And I just, I love that. And this is also why I wanted to invite you on this show. I, I of course, I didn't quite know that about you, but I already knew um, because you and I met a few years ago, you were volunteering and I, uh, in a, uh, retirement home of some sort, I vaguely recall now. And uh, I got to be part of that. And I just already knew from that experience, like Tanya is doing things to help people in the world. And I love that. And I, so I just, I, do you want to, do you want to speak to that? You know, you, you said shed light on subjects that affect our diminishing humanity. Yes. Um, it is something I firmly believe in because <sighs> Acting is amazing and it's wonderful. And you can be in the morning, you could be a queen and at night, you know, you could be a rock star and it's just, it's, it's so amazing. And, you know, I was talking to someone about this earlier is we have so much power as actors because I mean, think about when you watch a movie or a TV show or stage, you sit down, you have your popcorn, you have your drink. And after a while you start forgetting about your popcorn and your drink, you stop forgetting about everything else. And you're in the moment there. You're in full belief of what's going on. You are in the room of what is happening. Therefore, we have a huge responsibility, right? We want to be as authentic as possible, as good of an actor as we can. We can't be like kind of okay because then the audience is like, oh, I didn't believe that. Did you believe I didn't believe that. Did you, right? You don't right. want any of that. You want to take someone and immerse them in your world. And because of that, if you're really good at that, you can take on subjects that are difficult for people, subjects that people are desensitized to, and you can do it in such a way that it's sort of like s sneaking up on people. It's shifting people. It's changing them. They start to go, you know, I felt this today. I cried over this, you know, and, and therefore, and now I'm going to talk to other people. I saw this movie and I just felt all these emotions, or maybe someone starts something or does something because of it. And our world, it's just like, our humanity. I mean, look at like all the, the past few years. I mean, we're yeah. so like ugh, all the time. And that's what artists do. We shed a light on that and we open it up and we can completely change the world. We can change the world. That is that. Yes. Thank you for speaking to that. I, I do agree. Um, one thing I love about movies is how they can sometimes not only connect us deeper to our, just our own, ex well, okay, I'm about to repeat myself. Okay. Sorry. I sometimes have tons of talk, talk going on up here. And then <laughs> yeah. Okay. What I love is they can help us understand our own experiences better and feel seen and heard, even though yes. we're simply watching a movie, an actor, you know, playing a role. And yet it can reflect back to us that's right. I'm not alone. Like, okay, someone else out there in the world gets me, right? That actor had to ha has to have some understanding for what someone in my situation is going through. The yes, screenwriter, yes, yes. right? Th right? That's something I love about movies and get so amazed and like, oh my gosh, these people are helping people heal in some ways, I believe. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, um, I talk, I mean, think about it this way, right? So let's just say, I'm in a film and I'm playing a teacher and there's a little girl and the little girl is, you know, maybe someone in her family, like maybe she's being abused by her father, like, you know, her father hits her. And so she's in the back of that theater watching. And then the film is about this other little girl that is going through the same thing. And mm -hmm. she opens up to her teacher mm -hmm. and then I'm her teacher. And I'm like, it's okay, honey, tell me what's going on. I'm going to help you. And so that little girl says, Oh, look, Look what happened over there. She talked to someone and someone helped her. And then that's what happened. And that's from acting. And we change things, you know? 
That is such a powerful example, Tanya. That is, that is really beautiful. Um, yeah, I love that. It, I'm going to, I want to ask you, uh, have you ever had an experience like that where you saw something on screen that brought you to deeper awareness or healing or insight about something going on in your life? Yeah, I did. You know, I saw, I don't remember the film. It was something, um, someone was having a very hard relationship with, um, their mother, their okay. senior mother having a really hard relationship. And I saw them. And at the end of the film, the mother passes and, as um, the 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 daughter was an adult, she healed that relationship with her mom, and they wound up having just like a beautiful relationship. And I had always had a tough relationship with my mom. My mom was a single mom. There were times we were homeless. I mean, it's just it was really it was really hard. And all growing up, it was really difficult. And I'd always wanted this close relationship with my mom, and I was just like, oh, why can't I have it? And I remember seeing this movie and thinking, sorry. And th Okay. No, I'm sorry. It's okay. And thinking to myself, like, I don't want this like world to go by without me being close with my mom. And that was the day after I saw that I was like, mom, we're going to repair this. And I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to yell it out or whatever. And then I did. And we have like an amazing relationship now. And I wouldn't have done that without that film. I know that I wouldn't have, I was too like angry and mad and all in myself and selfish. You know what I mean? Oh, that's, thank yeah. you. That's a beautiful story. And um, yeah, that's, thank you. That's, that's awesome. You're okay. Welcome. Yeah. Okay. Tanya, I want to um, tell people where they can go. We're not done exactly yet, but I want to tell people where they can go to connect with you. So we have your website, Tanya Lynette Smith.com. And I'm going to spell that for everybody who's simply listening to the podcast. Tanya is T A N Y A. L I N E T T E S M I T H dot com, Tanya Lynette Smith dot com. And what can people find when they go to your website? When they go to my website, they can find little tidbits about me, um, my beliefs, what my classes look like, how they feel like. Um, advice. I have a guide, like a free guide, it's absolutely free, that gives some tidbits. Um, they can go to um, some videos of some of me teaching some classes. So just to get an idea of who I am and if I'm a right fit for the person, you know? Yeah. And, and actually I'm, I'm glad this came up. Um, do you, do you only do in-person classes or do you do virtual as well? How do you operate? No, well, I do them all. I do in-person and I do virtual and I do set coaching. So I'm kind of like all over the place. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, great. And then we also have your Instagram. Oh, I just took everything away. We also have your Instagram here. If anyone wants to connect with you, you're also at Tanya Lynette Smith there on Instagram. What, what is your goal as an acting coach? My goal as an acting coach this is going to seem so. I don't want anyone to give up. Don't leave the party before the party is over. I don't want anyone to give up on their dream. If they want to do this, I just, my goal is to keep them in. You know, I, I don't want, I, I, it's right there. If you have a dream, if you really, really want this, the worst thing that you can do is give up on it. And if I can help someone with that, that is all I want to do. That's it. I, I love, I love that you said that. And is the dream the same for everyone? It's completely different for everyone. And it shifts. You might think you want this and you're like, oh, wow. Like, you know, with me, I thought I wanted this and then it turned into coaching. You know what I mean? It's different for everyone and you can't compare yourself. What do you want? Go for it. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that you're able to speak to that because some people might think, what? I, it makes no sense. I've always wanted to be an actor, but I'm never going to be a movie star. Therefore, I shouldn't even bother taking an acting class. It's like, mm. wait a second. Why does being a movie star have to be the goal? What about, you know, doing local community theater or doing voiceover work or right? I, I, are, are, what, what are some of the creative ways that maybe you've seen or maybe you've done or some of your students have been able to utilize their acting skills? Oh my gosh. And just so many things talking to people, um, you know, volunteering, you know, even when you volunteer, like with animals or something, and you want to play little games with them to get them to open up. I mean, it's just like everything. Yeah. It morphs into everything. If, if you are an artist, all, all being an artist is, is inside of yourself inside. You have something to say, 
That's all it is. I have something to say. So therefore, aren't we all artists? Just some are in front and some are behind the scenes. That's all. It's just in everything. You bring it to everything that you do. It's just, do you want to open up and have it be a main part of your life? One of my personal values is self-expression. And what I heard through what you just shared is uh, you, acting really helps people be able to speak their truth, use their voice. And that brings us right back to being their authentic self in the world, which if you were to never grace any stage whatsoever, what freedom there is in being able to feel free whew, right? just within your own life with the people in your everyday world to be able to feel free to, to, to be more of you and how interesting and ironic it might sound to be able to learn how to do that through playing other roles and characters. It's just, it's, I, I love the dichotomy there. I love right. that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, Tanya, do you have any final words you'd like to share with everyone before we close out? I guess, you know, my final thing would be if you want to do something and you've always wanted to do something, stop everything you're doing right now go to the end of your show, right? Stop everything that you're doing right now and start. And it could start even just by telling someone that means something to you and that is supportive of you. I've always wanted to do this and I've been a little bit of afraid of it, but I really want to do it. You just have to start, just start. That is the hardest part. If you start, you're already on your way. Yeah. Fantastic tip. I, I love that one. So exactly. Just start. Tanya, thank you so much for being here today. I really loved our conversation. So. I did too. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Thank you. You're so welcome. So Tanya, I am just, of course, going to put you back down into the lobby. I'm going to close out the show and then I'll see you again in just a moment. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Bye, Tanya. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love conversations that that are all about this authenticity, right? Of supporting you and in, in feeling more free and flowing in who you are and your self-expression through being an actor, simply being yourself, whichever it may be. Let me know what you're taking away from today's conversation. Let us know down in the comments on whatever platform you, you listened or you watched today. I want to know what came through for you. And I want to say a big thank you to Tanya because this was an awesome conversation just flowing today. Definitely, of course, check her out again. I'm going to put her website up on the screen again, tanyalinettesmith.com. And remember, every day is always a new day. Wherever you are today does not have to be where you are tomorrow. You get to choose. You get to choose when it's it's time for you to step into that new day experience and you don't even have to wait for the next day right that's literally just a metaphor you can make the decision say you know what like tanya just said i'm gonna do it right now i'm not gonna i'm not gonna wait anymore what's the point of waiting right as 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 <laughs> this is coming up for me so i'm gonna share it. as infinite as we are this is all we really have too right this is your moment this is your life and so how can you maximize this moment for you. I, I, I hope that this is really supporting you and inspiring you into take action on whatever that thing that has been maybe circling through in your head, something you've been longing to do. Listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. Say yes to you. You will thank yourself. I'm certain of it. Have an amazing day, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and close out the show and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now.